welcome back to Entrepreneurship Tuesday right here on Y in the morning at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social in this particular session we get into an interview that looks at green business ideas for the young people it doesn't have necessarily be young people but you know it's a business idea and when it's Tuesday it's matters pertaining entrepreneurship and we're here for you uh, to find ways we can make more income and finances that it is so in studio I am joined by Susan Mute, who is the founder of Mazingira Na Amani. Uh, besides that, Susan is a passionate environmentalist and a lawyer by profession. Happy Tuesday, Susan. How are you? Happy Tuesday. I'm very fine. What about you? I'm actually doing very well. Thank you for hosting me. You're very much welcome. The only issue I have is the Nairobi weather. It's so unpredictable. You can just but imagine. <laughs> yeah, so setting us off, yeah, I would like to find that. You run a Mazingira uh, Na Amani organization. So what is it all about? Take us through what Mazingira Na Amani is all about. All right. Just from the name Mazingira Na Amani, you can just know that it's all about environment in relation to peace. The reason as to why I formed the organization is because we have a lot of environmental conflicts and you need to address such conflicts, such that you find uh, we have hunger crisis, we have climate change, we have people fighting over land due to limited, uh, sorry, uh, due to limited water space and, uh, and all that. So that is why it initiated me to form the organization, to just tackle those environmental conflicts. All right. And are there like uh, green business ideas that young people can just dive into and just run, run with this opportunity? Oh, yes, really. Uh, you see a lot of young people don't know that we have a lot of opportunities in this green space such that we have uh, the ways in which they can generate income through the recycled products that is glass and the plastic they can create something creative and then sell it to get income the other way is that these young people of course we know with this digital generation you can do a lot of things in regards to art poetry, seeing, write something about environment. That is one of the ways, actually. That is one of the ways to, uh, uh, to spread this gospel of environmental conservation. Mm -hmm. The other way is young people can also engage in urban farming. Mm -hmm. If they engage in urban farming, of course, there will be the issue of food security, and mm -hmm. the other way they will be generating income mm -hmm. through it. Mm -hmm. well, okay, so for someone who doesn't understand what is urban farming, and uh, maybe you could just explain that to us. Urban farming, how do I put it? <laughs> okay, let me use an analogy to explain. Okay. You see, they, they, you can go to a certain community and you find some, some people growing sacks, some people growing, sorry, uh, spinach using sacks. Uh -huh. They can also use the tires and the plastic bags mm -hmm. and then they put soil there and then they grow the seedlings. Mm -hmm. And of course, because I've mentioned on the issue of urban farming, we can also engage these people in growing tree nurseries so that they can sell the seedlings. Oh yeah, I've seen that, I've seen that, and also we, uh, we have also uh, guys who plant flowers and, you know, just end up selling them and uh, all the, for the part of decorating also, so yeah, so different opportunities out there. Yeah, exactly, that is the way to go, and uh, if they engage in this, you see, if you engage in a certain practice, you develop the culture of consultant. So unless these young people engage in such activities, they, do, they cannot know the essence of conservation. Ah. Now, what was the main reason why the, the organization was created in the first place? Uh, my organization was inspired when I took a tour in Mathare. Okay. And I saw a lot of conflicts there. I saw the issue of garbage being mishandled. And people there are getting are falling sick. And one is addressing such issues. Number one is due to ignorance. Number two is due to unavoidable circumstances which push people to live in such an environment. So I saw the, there's, there's that gap. People don't know a lot. Okay. So that is why mo one of my initiatives is actually to participate or to make these communities participate by me training them on the importance of conservation, on okay. the importance of having a clean environment in right. that space. Okay. So in this uh, process of just uh, enlightening them on how important it is to conserve the environment, what are some of the, how, like the process of addressing these particular issues, especially in the infor uh, informal settlement like that, like in Madare. So what are some of the ways apart from just teaching them, uh, just to ensure that, it's, that there's an effective implementation of what exactly you are teaching? Them. I also engage them in certain practices like mm -hmm. tree planting, okay. uh, teaching them on how to, uh, to 
to practice urban farming and I teach them also on how to use the plastics to do something constructive out of it. So if they are taught, they say education is power mm -hmm. and learning is a continuous process. So if they learn, they see the importance of it. Okay. And that so, is how they grow that culture. All right, all right, all right. So what are some of the ways we can conserve our environment just to curb the problem and the issue of the hunger crisis? All right, talking about hunger crisis, it is very important to know that uh, when you're talking about environmental conservation, it begins in your house. Mm -hmm. What do you do in your house? How do you dispose of that waste? And if you dispose that waste, do you follow it up on, how, on, on where it is dumped, actually? So talking about hunger crisis when you have this climate change, as you said earlier when you begin the interview, it's very hard to know whether it's going to rain in the morning, whether it's going to be sunny, it's very hard. So you can just imagine the the frustration that, that the farmers are facing. Absolutely. They don't know even the right time to plant, the right time to harvest. Yeah, the right time to harvest. Because they are afraid, if I plant right now, floods might affect my crops. Mm. If I plant right now, we can have drought and my, crop, and my crops rather will dry. So what will happen? So that is why we are introducing the concept of urban farming. With urban farming, you can manage to beat up, you can manage to beat this hunger crisis mm. and they be the issue of food security. But in as much as we're talking about food security, it is important to also heal our climate. We are in a crisis. Absolutely, because it all goes back to the climate. Exactly. Climate is the leading factor in this. Okay, 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 Susan. So one of the uh, uh, business ideas of green business ideas of giving us is the urban farming. What else is there for us? As young people, uh, all right. You know, Kenya, Kenya basically depends on agriculture. Absolutely, to be sure. yes. Be it in the fishery business, mm -hmm. be it in the livestock keeping, be it in the crop farming and all that. So you see, if at all we are not restoring our climate, we'll be... Uh, will actually be suffering okay. for the nation. But anyway, apart from urban farming, that is one of the areas in green business. Other, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I, as I mentioned earlier, we have the issue of using uh, plastics and glasses to recycle and creating this uh, beautiful, of course we love beauty, creating these beautiful pieces in our home art pieces. And you can also uh, encourage the young people to use their talents, be it uh, let them go out there in the community. Mm -hmm. Let them sing. Let them sing about environmental conservation. We have seen a lot of people singing and then generate, mm -hmm. generating money with, mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So, and when you look at uh, your organization, and uh, one of the programs is the community training. So, who is eligible to be part of the community training, and what is community community training all about? All right. You see, in the environmental space, everyone is affected, whether you are young, old. It doesn't matter your age. Mm -hmm. Everyone is just affected by this, uh, by this environment. So there is no limitation so long as the community at large know the importance of environmental conservation. So on community trainings, you go and teach them. For for instance, if you are planting trees, the best trees to plant in a certain area, mm -hmm. uh, uh, how you can use, the, how you can recycle these things, how, how just basically just that, and the kinds of rights that they have. We have environmental rights basically, which are social rights. Okay. So take us through some of the projects that you have conducted as an organization. All right, uh, I am very happy <laughs> that my organization is barely one month old and I've done a lot. Uh, the first thing that I concentrate on very much okay. is environmental, uh, sorry, is community trainings. Mm -hmm. Considering the fact that uh, I'm introducing the aspect of sustainability such that if I train someone, that someone will go and train someone. And if I tell them this is the way to go, they will actually go and spread the gospel. That is now introducing the aspect of sustainability in this conservation industry. Uh, I've done uh, some tree plantation exercise, and you will notice that even in my, uh, my images in the website, we have young people there. Mm -hmm. And I'm so touched with the young people, because we are growing old. Absolutely. We are going. So what about these young people? They need to know these things early enough. Because mm -hmm. if they know these things early enough, of course, they will teach their kids and their kids, and that is how the aspect of sustainability is brought. Oh, yes. Okay. So, uh, 
I mentioned earlier on when we started this conversation on how the Nairobi weather is so unpredictable. Very I don't know about you guys from wherever you are watching us from, but Nairobi weather is so unpredictable. So uh, what causes this difference in the weather patterns that, as you mentioned earlier on, uh, that also it affects the farmers because they don't know the time to till the land. They don't know the time to just plant to harvest. So it's so confusing. So what causes the unpred unpredictability of the weather? The answer is very simple, climate change. Okay. We are experiencing that, especially in Kenya. Because, uh, for, for instance, let me give you a scenario. In January this year, we experienced rains, which yeah. was very weird. Yeah, because January is, is normally it's hot. We you know, know it so for the dry month. Yes. And, ki and uh, some time back, especially I remember during the 205, 206 time, you could have known that during the month of June and July, you could have gone to buy the heavy jackets because you knew the cold was coming. But what about now? It's very hard to predict. Mm -hmm. Very hard. For instance, today it, it was raining in the morning. We are not even sure whether, what the weather will be in the afternoon hours. So a person might overdress for nothing, mm -hmm. which is what we are now addressing. We are seriously experiencing climate change in mm -hmm. Kenya right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Speaking about overdressing, I just remember a day where <laughs> I totally overdressed and it became so hot on that day. Anyway. So what are some of the ways the state can actually prepare in terms of uh, risk management when you, when you talk about food security in the country? Uh, number one, I don't know whether people know this, but we have very good environmental policies in Kenya. Mm -hmm. What is remaining is now the implementation bit. Mm -hmm. We need to implement these environmental policies. Mm -hmm. And number two, people mm -hmm. need to be taught on the alternatives ways in which they can survive. For instance, no one knew Corona would emerge. No one was even prepared about it. Look at the economic sabotage right now. We are all facing it, right? So if we, we teach our people on the alternatives, ways of farming, that is now where, why we are introducing the concept of urban farming. Because I know it, will, it is uh, convenient, it is cheap, and it is affordable for people. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you see, climate change is, uh, we cannot say that uh, it's a one-day thing. Of course, it takes time, and that is why now we are telling people plant more trees to absorb this carbon so that our climate can heal and so that we can have now predictable patterns so that our farmers can know when is the best time to till the land, when is the best time to prepare, when is the best time to harvest and all that, so that you can now restore the issue of food security. Right. Yes. So then I understand that you're the, the sole financial of your organization. When an investor comes or approaches you and asks you, how would you like me or us to come through in this particular organization? What are some of the key projects that you have in mind and how can potential investors come in hand? Thank you for that question. Of course, we need uh, uh, partners, we need uh, financiers, and we need donors. The reason as to why I'm saying this is, uh, this is not an easy space, especially because it affects all of us. Uh, we need to, uh, we need people who can invest in us so that we introduce this concept of urban farming because basically I deal with the informal settlements and it is not one. We have uh, various informal settlements in uh, Nairobi and yeah, we need uh, people who can finance us in that. And secondly, we need, uh, considering now I brought the issue of, uh, of uh, the green jobs, basically you know, training, training uh, for you to train you need some equipment especially when you're talking about uh, recycling. Because there's an organization in Madare which uh, does this. They want uh, or uh, they burn the, the, the plastic and they use that energy no, to cook instead of using charcoal. So, okay. so you see, for them, they are uh, uh, bringing the issue of tree conservation. Do not uh, cut the trees just for the charcoal. We have other alternatives. And you see, if they burn this plastic, there's a way that they... Of course, you see, we, have, we are also trying to uh, consider the carbon emission. If, if, of course, when you uh, burn plastic, we have the carbon being emitted. So what are the ways in which they do? Of course, they have considered that. Now you see, it, it requires a lot of money for that. Mm. Another green business idea is that I was having a conversation with a friend. 
uh, probably last week or so uh, after our uh, entrepreneurship Tuesday. So the, we were talking about the way we can just uh, you know recycle plastic into uh, fence, like post fence, and there are so many opportunities in this space of green business ideas. And just having this conversation with you just makes it way broader and. A, absolutely amazing for the young people to just dive into this so Susan you also have a background in law how has that actually uh, played a role when uh, just uh, studying this organization and also in the in the process of just uh, being active while at it all right uh, of course it helps considering the fact that we have environmental rights uh, now uh, environmental rights are social rights and they are collective rights. You can't say that this certain individual has the right to a clean environment, leaving out the rest. It's a collective right. So uh, my legal background has really helped me in addressing these issues because uh, I know uh, this, uh, the rights that we have in the environmental space. And if these rights are breached, these are the alternative remedies that we have mm -hmm. for the court of law. All right. Yes. So let's look at the financial lessons that you have learned when starting this organization. You know, I'm so sure. Of, of course, finances are key, 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 <laughs> key aspect to study any form of an organization, a company, or anything, right? So, what are a couple of uh, financial lessons that you have learned? Uh, I've learned it's really important to plan in advance. Mm -hmm. You cannot just ambush yourself in a, and register an organization like just like that. Because okay. as for me, I am very passionate about the aspect of sustainability. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to start something and then it falls in the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, Wangare Mother is my main inspiration. She started her organization way, way back and it's still running even after her death. Sad to say. Okay. May her soul rest in peace. Amen. So, all right. So let's look at a few years down the line. Let's look at three, three years down the road. So, Susan Bia, I think, it comes to uh, the environment aspect of it. Uh, my aspiration is to touch as many lives as possible. Mm -hmm. And I quote Wangari Mathai, she's my role model. You'll hear me quoting her a lot of times. She once said, just like a human bird, she will do the best that she can. Of course, I want to do the best that, that I can in touching these people in the informal settlements. You really have no idea what they do, what injustice they suffer, the ecological mm -hmm. injustice that they suffer. Of course, if you teach them on this, of course, the, most of them don't even know that they have environmental rights towards their uh, space. They even don't know that. But can you just imagine if they, you just enlighten them, okay, so you guys have these rights. And you guys need to do this to conserve the environment. And instead, instead of you just staying there, we also have alternative ways to generate income. You have the urban farming, you have this and this. You can just imagine how many lives you will have touched. And of course, if they, if they learn something, they'll go and tell other people and tell other people down. That brings the aspect of sustainability. And by the time you know it, you'll see these informal settlements are becoming better places. Absolutely. And lives being changed. Exactly. All right. So how can people reach out to you if they want to be part of Mazingira na Amani uh, organization, even if it's uh, in, on the community training uh, program? How can people reach out to you? Uh, I have a website. Uh, I have a website uh, uh, by org, And also they can reach me via Facebook at Susan Mute, Twitter, Susan underscore Mute. Everything is Susan Mute, Susan Mute. Yeah. All right, so that it is on your screen, and uh, your blogs are amazing. And young people can actually go through the blogs and get many, many, as many green business ideas as you can on that particular blog, and that is at Mazingira Namani, right? Yes. All right, so guys, that is uh, uh, Susan Mute. Thank you very much for creating time to be with us and taking us through uh, different green business ideas that we can actually uh, indulge in, right? You're welcome. Okay, you're welcome back again if you have new projects, right? And we would like to just uh, have you over and take us through this, you know, different ideas. I <laughs> have uh, ideas. an incoming project and now we'll keep you posted. Oh, I, I appreciate. So, guys, that is Susan Mute, the founder of Mazingira Na Amani uh, organization. So, guys, make sure you don't have that down. We'll be right back with another interview. Try to for channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. We'll be right back.